All right. We started Daniel chapter two last week, and that that was where King Nebuchadnezzar was having these recurring dreams. Donette pointed out that it was a recurring dream, and it was troubling him. He couldn't sleep. He was anxious. And he wanted to know what this dream was about. So he brought in all of his soothsayers and magicians and astrologers, all the wise men, and he demanded that they tell him uh, not just the interpretation of the dream, but tell him the dream itself. And of course, they protested. They said, you know, that's impossible. You're, what you're asking is too difficult. Nobody has ever asked that, and nobody, no human being can answer it. It said only, as the, their answer was, only the gods who don't dwell in flesh can answer that. And they were somewhat right that, that no no human being could answer it, and, and only only God can do it. They But they weren't looking to the, the God of Daniel, the, the, the creator. They were looking to their false gods. So anyway, Nebuchadnezzar, he, he was kind of a, I guess you'd call him a despot. He was a, a dictator and he, he demanded and said, if you don't, you know, you either tell me the, uh, the, the dream and the interpretation or I'm going to tear you limb from limb and your houses are going to become a, nothing but a pile of rubble. He said, but if you do answer, he said, I'll, I'll give you gifts. I'll give you honor and so forth. And they, they couldn't come up with the dream and so he said he gave orders that they would all be killed all the wise men of babylon would be killed including daniel and his three friends even those that weren't standing before him were going to be killed and so daniel i heard that, that was going to happen and so he appealed to the bodyguard what was his name arioc or something yeah arioc the captain of the bodyguard he said daniel replied with discretion and discernment so he wasn't you know he wasn't being demanding or anything he used godly discernment in the way he he responded to him and he asked he, he just questioned him said you know why is this so urgent why what tell me about this why is it so urgent and he went in he asked the king if he could have some time to so that he might declare the interpretation and so he went in the meantime he went to his house and he to his three friends and told them what was happening and and they said that they might pray to God, ask for compassion so that they might not be killed along with all the wise men in Babylon. So they did that. They prayed. Then we saw that the mystery was revealed to Daniel. And that's and it was revealed in a night vision. We had a little talk about that. And it probably probably was different from a dream because Nebuchadnezzar talks specifically about a dream. So this was some kind of vision that God gave him at, at night. And that's where we. <clears throat> where we finished up last week we're in verse verse 19 the mystery was revealed to daniel in a night vision uh, anybody have any additional insights from since last time that on this or are you ready to just pick up from there all right so so yeah after they made the request is when when god revealed that secret to them um if they hadn't requested, I don't know, God probably wouldn't have revealed it to them. I mean, they, they Daniel, they knew that they couldn't come up with this on their own. They knew only God could, could provide the, the dream to them and the interpretation. So they requested it and God granted it to them. And how, how did Daniel respond then once God gave him that, that vision? A couple, about four verses there, his response. He praised him. He praised God, didn't he? It's quite kind a, of like his version of the Magnificat, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like he had a little praise service there, didn't he? It, it yeah. Pretty, pretty awesome. And, uh, I noticed, and I, I noticed he says, he says, let the name of God be blessed forever and ever. And I, that kind of stuck with me since you brought made that point the other week, Tom, about you know how important God's name is. He, you know, he said. Let the name, let the name of God be blessed forever and ever. And, and you know, God's name, it's it's important, isn't it? I mean, in the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be thy name. And, you know, and it's uh blas anybody who blasphemes the name of God is to be stoned. So his his name is is very important, very precious to him. Because that in well, isn't I mean that's who he is essentially. You know, his name is his character, it's who he is. Uh are in the biblical times names always were very significant they described who the person was and in their character 
So isn't it? Isn't that? It's to be more desired than riches, right? Yeah, right. A, good, a name, just a name. A good name is more to be desired than great riches. And God has so many names. You know, you think of all those. Yeah. Jehovah and all the names that He has. I mean, there's like forty or fifty different. Is that what it is? Specific I, names. I was just wondering how many it was, but yeah. Yeah, quite a few. Yes, I don't know. There's just something. Well, and then, and then was that something? There's something about that name. Yeah. The name yeah. Jesus. And yeah. And, and each one of those names is descriptive. It, like Jehovah Rapha, uh, right. Jehovah Nisi, you know, God our banner, God our healer, God our provider. His name is so, so important, so to be hallowed, so to be revered, so to be honored and respected. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So he said, let the name of God be blessed forever and ever. For wisdom and power belong to him. Daniel knew that the wisdom and power only comes from God. And, and that, well, and that's one of, I think, mankind's downfalls. We think wisdom and power comes from us, right? We, we rely on on our own wisdom, our own power. And Donette, did you have something to share? I noticed you're unmuted. Well, I was going to ask a question, but then I, I answered it. So, oh, <laughs> in my okay. head, so I'm good. <laughs> well, all right. Do you want to share it with the rest of us? Maybe we have the same question. No, we, I just remembered that we discussed it last week. I was thinking, oh, how did this, how was this revealed to him? But we did mm -hmm. discuss it as a night vision. Right. Not not like a dream. It was like something I guess that he saw. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, I okay. had a, a moment there, a senior moment. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know anything about those. So. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say that. Yeah. Wish I could honestly say that. Yeah. So anyway, um God revealed it to Daniel in a night vision and uh so he said, "Wisdom and power belongs to him." Daniel acknowledged that that you know this didn't come, and he's gonna he's gonna show he's gonna make that clear later on that this didn't come from me because I'm wise. It came from God, and says that he, he and this will be important as we look at the dream. The next verse says, "He who it's he who changes the times and the epochs. He removes kings and establishes kings because that's what the this dream is all about. It's about God setting up." these successive Gentile kingdoms. It's going to start with Nebuchadnezzar, that which he thought Nebuchadnezzar thought was the greatest kingdom ever. They're going to be overtaken by the Persians. And then the Persians are going to be overtaken by the Greeks. And then the Greeks are going to be overtaken by the Romans. And it says that God's the one that does that. He's the one that changed the times and the seasons. He's the one who rate, removes kings, establishes kings. So, you know, the, Nebuchadnezzar, as great as he was, probably even probably the greatest king ever in the face of the earth, possibly. I don't know. I mean, he certainly thought he was. Um, it, but yet it was God that, that raised him up and God that brought him down with, you know, just like a, you know, a flea or a grasshopper to, to God. So, um, so he gives wisdom to wise men, the knowledge of and knowledge and men of understanding. So any knowledge we have, it's from God. He's the one that reveals the profound and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. Kind of interesting there. He says, he knows what's in the darkness. Yeah. We, there's so, so many, you know, darkness is so uh, prevalent in the world. It's, I mean, it's mentioned in the scripture about how, how men hate the light because their deeds are evil. They, they, do everything in the dark because they think that their deeds are going to be hidden in the dark. But yet God says that God knows what's in the darkness. Nothing, nothing is hidden from his sight. Light dwells with him. And it says to you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise for you have given me wisdom and power. Even now you have made known to me what, what we requested of you. We asked and you, you provided you have made known to us the king's matter. All right, so he's having a little praise service there, and, and appropriately so. Uh, let's see. So what do they do next then? Verse 24. After he praised God for revealing the, the, 
the dream? What, what, what was his next course of action? Went to area. And I think it's, I think it's kind of neat that he was, he wanted the other guys to be saved too. That was the important first thing he wanted to say, like, don't kill them yet. And don't kill them because I have the right answer either. I, I thought that was so uh, poignant. I don't know if that's the right word. My, my vocab, excuse me, forgive my vocabulary, but I thought that was so important that, that Daniel, uh, yeah, his his concern was for the the wise men of Babylon. I mean, and just like God's is for amen. us, you know. Amen. Because uh, I'm Babylon was the enemy of of uh judah they're the ones they they captured you know you would think he would you know humanly speaking he would hold animosity towards him he'd say you know yeah go ahead and wipe them out i've, I've got the answer king save me but go ahead and wipe these other guys out they're a bunch of no good scoundrels but no like you pointed out tom it, you know that's just like god well and it brings to mind uh, jonah and nineveh you know nineveh was the enemy of of uh, Israel, that that was that was the capital city of Assyria. That that Syria was was the was the uh, was the country that that captured the northern kingdom. They were brutal. They they were so cruel to God's chosen people. That's why Jonah ran away. He didn't want to go and and proclaim uh, repentance and judgment. He wanted them to be wiped wiped out. So he was, that's why he was, ran away from God. That's why he was distraught whenever God relented from the judgment he was going to bring upon them because they were bitter enemies. But yet, like you pointed out, Tom, you know, God loves even, even the, the wicked. He, he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that they turn from their way and live. So he, he just like he has compassion on the Assyrians, he has compassion on the Babylonians as well. You know, and he had no pride either. I mean, there was no mm -hmm. like, I got the right answer. Those guys don't, you know, yeah. do, do what you want with them. I mean, it, it was those are things that God, our pride and our our lack of humility and that kind of stuff gets so many of us, but um, he didn't have it. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. In our flesh, we'd have been up there with our chest puffed out and yeah, I got it. I got the answer. You, you bunch of slackers. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Heen. What do you want to share? It's based on what Tom said, you know, anyone who professed to be a Christ follower talk like that, you have to like, you know, question about faith. Yeah. I, I mean, if you're truly a Christ follower, you have to have a heart just like Christ. And yeah. And pay with the you know fellow sinner <laughs> instead of like you know so quick to judge and uh, pass yeah. judge good point yeah i mean we may even a christ follower may have a, a moment or two where you know we where we have those you know we may have those moments occasionally but yeah that should not be the character characteristic right. of life we we have to come to christ humbly and so he gives us a new heart mm -hmm. yeah so good point he thank you but it's though, I mean, you do know people that are like that, like, you know, so quick to, <clears throat> you know, with the, the way that they talk. Yeah, unfortunately. But, you know, listen to a person's, uh, how they speak, you can pretty much assume, you know, where they're at in their faith and so on. A lot of times you can, yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you, Heen. All right. So yeah, he was concerned about the other wise men. And so he asked it, said, well, take me into the king's presence so I may declare the interpretation. So it's interesting. <clears throat> did so what how did Ari Ariok respond? Did he take his time? Did he did he argue with Daniel? Did he say, Oh, you know, we're not gonna do this? He was very swift about it. Yeah, he was quick about it. He, he hurried in. It's interesting. Maybe it was just so imminent that they were about to be slain, you know? Maybe he yeah, just I, felt the urgency of that. That's or maybe what I'm just thinking. The excitement or both. Well, yeah, it could have been both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he was in a hurry. So yeah, that maybe the axe was about ready to fall. And maybe he was excited too. May and maybe well, I noticed it says. 
looks like he's taking some credit there. He says, I have found a man. So maybe that might have been part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey, hey, look, look, King, I have found a man that can answer this for you. Look at look how good yeah. I am. <laughs> yeah. He is gleaning a little bit, isn't he? <laughs> But later, you know, like he he didn't. Um, I, I mean, he willing to listen to our option instead of having kill right away to mm -hmm. save. So his heart, you know, somewhat good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to accuse him of being totally uh, self centered. Although maybe I don't well, know. Well, it's a win win for him. Yeah. I mean, he gets a little status, and he gets. And he's also doing a good thing for these people. Yeah, yeah that's a win-win. Yeah, for, for all three, because he's helping the king too. The king's going to get right. an answer. I'm going to get a pat in the back. I'm gonna, these other wise men aren't going to get killed. So yeah, yeah, true. And so let's see. Yeah, I have found a man. They put a lot of trust in him, though. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, how does how did he know he could trust Daniel? Hmm. Yeah, that that's a great point. <laughs> that's a great point. I didn't think about that. Yeah. What if what if he's wrong? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> God had his hand in it, right? I mean, oh, he absolutely. probably often Ariel's heart in order, you know, to to listen to our option because it's all in God's plan. That, that could be too. Well, that's true. But did Ariok know that? Yeah. We can't uh, rule that out. What's that, Tom? But did Ariok know that? I, was he a believer? I I doubt it. I I I'd be surprised if he was. Yeah. But but God can cause anyone's heart to be soft and yeah. to and to sure. His will, regardless of like you're a believer or not. True. Yeah, He turns mm -hmm. things hearts like water. So yeah, that's that's a good point too. Okay. And I bet that in all the years that Daniel had already been there, that he had really established his credibility and his relationship with God. That it was like he is a trustworthy man. I can trust what he tells me. And that's a good point. Yeah. Too. His proven, reputation. Yeah, his reputation. That's a good point too. Yeah, he had proven himself. Had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right. It's all mm -hmm. sites. Mark, anything additional to add? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the situation I, I find is very similar to uh, what Joseph had with mm. his jailers. Yeah, well. yeah. You know, uh, he had a good, um, good reputation and a good uh, 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 yeah. communication yeah. Uh, with his jailers. With the mm -hmm. people that he was Catholic mm -hmm. too. Yeah, good point. Mark. All right, so. And of course, all of that is, is still comes back to God. I mean, that's that's the only reason Daniel had that disposition. God had given it to him. God had given him wisdom and so forth. It was all because of his trust, trust in the Lord. Right. Yeah. Is there something else done at? Um, no, that's all I have. Okay. All right. Yeah, good, good insights, everybody. All right. Um, say it rushed in. So I found a man from among the exiles from Judah who can make the interpretation known to the king. And so the king answered him, Are you able? Interesting, there, you know, we talked about this. I think Donette brought it up a week or two ago. It says the king answered and said to Daniel, but it also says whose name was Belshazzar. So I, I I still don't know why you know, Daniel is normally referred to as Daniel and the others are normally referred to their Babylonian names, but I don't know, maybe as we go on, the Lord will give us insight, but here it's both of his names for are mentioned. Did Daniel write this? Did uh, he, was he the one that held the pen? I, I believe so. Yeah, I, that's what I think I read. I think there might be something in there that might give us an answer but i'm not yeah. sure what it is yeah what what did you say donette maybe that's why because if he like tom was saying if he wrote this then yeah he was going from his heart and what he felt and his real name was daniel then yeah he didn't, uh, see himself as the the given name, mm -hmm. his name. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that that's a good well point. Be. That could very well be. Yeah, he knew in his heart he was still identified by his his God and not by the Babylonian God. So that, that very well could be it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So he says, Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar. Uh, the king asked him, are you able to make known to me the dream and its interpretation? So he makes it clear, you know, I don't, I'm not just looking for an interpretation. I want you to tell me what the dream is, too. Mm. All right. Um, let's see. Where am I? Um, I love the way that God stages it, too, that it's like all coming to that point where it's coming together. It's like, your guys can't do this. You guys can't do that. Dude. But there mm -hmm. is a God who can do all of this, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. it's just, again, it just gives so much more credibility to God. Amen. Yep. And all the glory goes to him. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. Verse 27. Look what Daniel says there. He says, no man can answer this. Says this mystery, not no wise man, no magician, no conjurer, no diviner is able to declare it. No man can do this. However, as Tom said, however, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the latter days. This was your dream and the visions in your mind while on your bed. Here, here you go, King. No wise man can do this, only the God in heaven. So what, what's he saying the dream is? He's saying, oh, yeah, in verse 30, I think is, we already touched on that a little bit, but he's saying, as for me, wasn't revealed to me because I'm any wiser than anybody else. I think that's important that he's he makes that point. Says, I'm not saying, telling you this because I'm wiser than these other people. Uh, let's see. But the purpose, the reason this was made known, so that you might understand the thoughts of your mind. Okay. So he's, he's making it absolutely clear to the king that, that it's the God of heaven that's making this known to you. I'm no wiser than anybody else, but God wants you to know what these thoughts are on your mind. So then he goes and tells him what the dream is. Here's what the dream is that you had, king. You were looking, there was a single great statue. It was large, extraordinary. It was it had extraordinary splendor. It was standing in front of you. Its appearance was awesome. The head was made of fine gold, breast and its arms of silver. The head of fine gold is we're going to see is Nebuchadnezzar. Breast and its arms of silver. We're going to see that that's the Persian kingdom. Its belly and its thighs of bronze. We're going to see that that's the Greek Empire. Its legs of iron. I see that that's the Roman Empire and his feet partly iron and partly clay. And then you continued looking until a stone was cut without hands. That's going to be Christ. It struck the statue on his feet of iron and clay and it crushed them. Christ, Christ is going to crush all the kingdoms, all the earthly kingdoms someday. And the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, the gold, every, all these kingdoms were crushed. All at the same time, it became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. You know what chaff is. If you, if you ever threshed wheat, it's the, the hall, the empty hut. Left over. Yeah. What's left over after you get the grain out of the out of the wheat. So they're going to be come like chaff. It gets blown away in the wind. Summer flesh, threshing floors, the wind carried them away, so that not a trace of them was found. But the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. That's Christ and his kingdom is going to fill the whole earth. It's going to come at the in the millennium. It's Christ's kingdom. Hey Jim, are those are those kingdoms known? I mean, you said I'm like, like yeah. this is what this is, and yeah, I know the gold one is definitely him, but I didn't know. That. Yeah, they I prefer they, all kinds of different things. Yeah, you now you can go through the history books and see them, and I think Daniel's going to even explain them. We're gonna oh, okay. Do, I think chapters five and seven. I forget what which okay where it is, but Daniel's gonna explain. Yeah, yeah. It's Nebuchadnezzar. Babylon ruled for about oh like seventy some years. It ruled from 
like about 612 BC to about 539 BC, give or take. And then after that is when the Persian Empire started. And and Daniel's going to live through that. He's going to Daniel's going to be there when the Persians take over the Babylon, the Babylonians. That's going to happen like around 539 BC at, at the end of, towards the end of Daniel's life. And uh, go ahead, Mark. You have something to add? No. Okay. Guess not. Um, How was so Nebuchadnezzar? Like, did he know about these other? <clears throat> areas yet or i don't know what age he was at this point so yeah he he would have known about the persian empire i would think i would um i would think he would well he wouldn't have known about the persian empire well I, yeah that's a good question what have you known hmm i don't know because it wasn't until you know 70 years i oh, just lost mark i guess he was telling us he had to leave um yeah it wouldn't have been till what, 68, 69, 70 years later that the Persian Empire would have taken over Babylon. I, I think they still they existed then, but I, I'd have to, I have to look. That's, yeah, that's a good question, Donette. I, I don't have an answer off the top of my head. Now, the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire, I, I don't think they would have even existed yet. Um, okay. the Persian may have. Oh, here, Mark's back. Okay. History is my worst subject, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm, I'm not good at history. I'm not even good at current events. So, <laughs> and I definitely don't know the future. Yeah. <laughs> well, we know what's written in God's word. I'm a sheep. Yeah, right. I'm a sheep. <laughs> uh, you're back, Mark. Did you have something to add? No, uh, no, I did not. I just uh, sorry okay. about the drop. No problem. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to get an answer to that question for next time, Donette. Um, I, I think the Persian king might have kingdom might have existed. It was it was not prominent yet, but I, I can tell you that. And I don't think the Greek and Romans even existed yet at that point. Thanks, Jim. Sure. And uh, yeah, the Babylonians they lasted about seventy years or so. The the Persians, they lasted about 200 years. And then the, uh, the Greeks, they lasted, uh, I got conflicting dates for that, somewhere between 160 and 260. I don't, I don't know. But, and then the, the Roman Empire, that lasted quite a while. That lasted like five or 600 years. So anyway, yeah, the Babylonians, they were... They burn brightly, but briefly. So. This really makes me think of America, though, like and where we stand in it. Yep. And, and, you know, we just think we're the best, greatest thing since sliced bread. And, yeah. you know, we're going to be crumbs here soon, possibly, or yep. maybe not that far off. I, yep. I think, I think, I, the same thing. I think we're getting closer and closer to becoming crumbs. What what yeah. did you say, Donette? I have the same feeling. Yeah. I, yeah. Same way. <laughs> yeah. I can yeah. agree with what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So we've been around for what almost turned 50 years. Yeah, you know, that seems like a long time, but we see these other kingdoms, they didn't last, some of them didn't last any longer than that. So yeah. Yep, I would not surprise me a bit that happens and they had all those proud outlooks that you know like we're going to continue and we're going to take the rest of the world and we'll mm -hmm. be in charge and we're the best thing ever yeah and we are so and proud they all went down yeah pride leaves before greek with the greeks with their minds and that kind of thing and romans with their power and yeah. all that it just shows that none of those things are enough to sustain you know yeah. any society any civilization without yeah. without a, a submitting to god yeah amen yeah yeah i have no doubt that we're going to crumble it's just a matter of when yeah maybe in our lifetimes i don't know may not maybe another couple hundred years i don't know but it's, it's going to happen yeah yeah All right. um I didn't mean to jump on your 
comments there. No, no, please do. I appreciate all the insights. So yeah, he's gonna now he's gonna that's what the dream was. Now he's gonna tell what the interpretation is. When we get down to let's see, verse yeah, verse 36. Here's what the dream, here's what the interpretation is. It says that's what the dream was, King. Now here I'm gonna tell you the interpretation. It says you, O oh king. And I don't know if he's just uh flattering the king or what, but he's you know, it's, it's some pretty glowing terms here he says you O king are the king of kings to whom the god of heaven has given the kingdom notice he makes sure nebuchadnezzar knows that god's the only one that gave that to you you didn't it wasn't because you were so wonderful as much as you think you are so you're the king of kings but it's the god of heaven that has given you the king kingdom he's given you the kingdom he's given you the power he's given you the strength he's given you the glory even which almost seems like a contradiction because we know God doesn't share his glory with anyone, but uh, he has given Nebuchadnezzar some kind of measure of glory, I guess you could say. Um, although it's certainly going to pale to the glory of God. And wherever the sons of men dwell or the beasts of the field or the birds of the sky, he has given them into your hand and he has caused you to rule over them. You are the head of gold, Nebuchadnezzar. And by this point, he's probably getting pretty puffed up. Now, after you, there's going to arise another kingdom. It's inferior to, your, to yours. It's going to be a silver kingdom. It's inferior to yours, but yet it's, going to, it's still going to overthrow you. And then another one, there's going to be a third kingdom of bronze. That's inferior even to the, to the silver kingdom. And that's going to rule over all the, all the earth. And that's, that third kingdom is Greece. That's going to be ruled by Alexander the Great. He ruled all the, he conquered all the kingdoms of the world. And then after you, there will rise another kingdom. Let's see, where is it? Um, okay, then there's going to be a fourth kingdom. It's going to be as strong as iron, as much as iron crushes and shatters all things. So like iron that breaks in pieces, it will crush and break all those in pieces. And that's going to be the Roman king, uh, dynasty. And Rome, Rome was brutal. It crushed everything. And I think I think we're going to get into a little more detail uh, in Daniel about these. Um, let's see. And then you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron. It will be a divided kingdom, but it will have in it the toughness of iron in as much as you saw the iron mixed with common clay. The toes of the feet were partly iron, partly of pottery. Some of the kingdoms will be strong and part of it will be brittle. And in that, you saw the iron mixed with common clay. They will combine with one another in the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, even as iron does not combine with pottery. And that's the one kingdom that has not yet, it's still in the future. And it's believed by most theologians that that's going to be uh, come about probably in the tribulation. It's going to be the revived Roman Empire, possibly. That one's still up for grabs. Um, it hasn't yet occurred, but. It's, they're thinking it's going to be the revived Roman Empire because of the, the iron, but it's going to be maybe like the, I don't know if it's going to be like the one world order because of the clay and mixing. You know, they're going to be combined, but they're not actually going to uh, adhere to one another. There's still a lot of speculation on that one. Um, probably if you read through Revelation, you get some additional insights. Dan Daniel's dream when we get to chapter seven is going to give us a some some more insights on it as well i think i think daniel's dream he's going to call it the king the beast with 10 horns i believe that's what daniel's dream is going to but we'll get to that in i think it's chapter seven that's the kind of thing that i feel like the united states is like you know it's like partly strong mm -hmm. it's partly brittle it's all mixed up and confused and all you know i'm just i'm just making a case for it in my own <laughs> mind i'm not given any biblical credibility to it but well you yeah you, you make a good case for it i mean that does sound a lot like united states doesn't it yeah it sure does yeah we're we're mixed up we're we're uh I'm mixed with the soft right. clay they will mix with one another in marriage they won't yeah. hold together yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what what was your thought done it But, but yeah, I can I can see that as well. 
I don't know if that's what was referring to, but it certainly applies. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then the final kingdom in verse 44 and 45. Want to take a guess on what that final kingdom is? In those it's got 12 gates. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Is that the New Jerusalem? Uh, New Jerusalem. You could say that. I would call it that. Uh, in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. That kingdom will not be left for another people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, but it but will itself endure forever. That certainly is Christ's kingdom, is it not? Inasmuch as you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, of course, how many times is Christ referred to as the rock or the, the stone, and it's uncut by human hands. He needed no, he didn't need your help. He doesn't need mine help. It's no human involvement there. It's the stone cut out without hands. It crushed the iron. It crushed the bronze. It crushed the clay, crushed the silver, crushed the gold. The great God has made known to the king what will take place in the future. So the dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. So how did, how did the king respond to that? I, I would think that would be, well, for one, I think it would be humbling. And I, <laughs> and I think we're going to see that it did humble him, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a bummer if you thought you were it. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm the king of kings. Probably, yeah, when he's first when he's first reading that or given that interpretation, he's probably thinking, yeah, that's me. I'm the king of kings. I'm that head of gold. Look at me. <laughs> Until he gets to verse 45. Gulp. Okay. Yeah, look how he responded. I, and I think that's uh that's wonderful the way he responded. He, he fell on his face. Did homage to Daniel, gave orders to present him an offering and fragrant incense. King answered Daniel and said, Surely your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, since you have been able to reveal this mystery. And he could have responded like, Look how some of the other kings, even the, the king, the kings of Judah and the kings of uh, of, of uh, Israel, how they responded when they got a bad report from the, from the prophets, you know, they, they wanted to kill the prophets. They threw them in jail. Here's a pagan Gentile, ungodly King. He responds in humility. That, that says a lot. I think a powerful King, one who is a ruthless dictator. He responds in humility. I, well, you know, I mean, don't we all need to come to the end of ourselves at some point? And, and I think that something as strong as what Daniel said and his, his courage to say it yeah. and everything, just the Holy Spirit just uh, revealed himself to Nebuchadnezzar in that time. Amen. Like that. And he was he was working on Nebuchadnezzar's heart through the dreams. Remember how troubled Daniel, right. Nebuchadnezzar was through the dreams? So, yeah, obviously God, you know, the Holy Spirit is working on Nebuchadnezzar's heart, isn't he? Yeah. Go, go ahead, Donette. Well, I was just thinking it, it just kind of shows you that someone that thinks they're almighty and powerful, you know, God can turn that around mm. and really put, you know, a Holy Spirit in your heart so that he can show it to you so that you can believe. I mean, he took this big, strong person and he was able to see. And I, I felt like he started to believe that god was the true god then i i don't know if that's true it sure is looking that way yeah we, i but and i think we're going to see as we go further you, we're going to see just yeah. humility and it it sure sounds like a, a genuine conversion we'll know for sure when we get to heaven but well but yeah i think you're right on that but uh when, and you bring up another good point, Donette. I'll go ahead, Tom, before I... No, I don't. No, go ahead. I'm, I want to hear. Well, you, you know, you, Donette, you bring up another good point. And when, as, you're, as you're talking about Nebuchadnezzar, I'm thinking of Saul of Tarsus as well. You know, we, right. we, think, we think someone that like Nebuchadnezzar or Saul of Tarsus, you know, all God, you know, God's never going to save them. They're too proud. They're too, too almighty, too powerful. I mean, Saul of Tarsus is out there killing 
Christians think, oh, there's no hope for him. And yet God used him probably the, well, not probably, he probably, he used him more than any other apostle as far as proclaiming the gospel and, and, and uh, revealing the scripture to him. So when I, when I look at that, when I look at Nebuchadnezzar, and I look at Saul Tarsus, I think, okay, you know, I'm not going to give, give up hope on my, you know, my friend or my neighbor, my relative that seems so hard and unreachable. You know, if God can reach them, he can reach anybody. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. You, you said it a lot better though. Yeah. That's yeah. You nailed it there. <laughs> it gives me encouragement for helping me express that. <laughs> oh, sure. Well, thanks for bringing it to light. What's the verse? What's the verse that says like he turns a king's heart in his hand? Mm -hmm. uh, that had this is perfect for that. Yeah, amen. You know, I don't have it memorized, but that's the, the gist of it. Yeah, uh, something about yeah. like water. He he turns the king's heart in his hand. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have to look that one up. That's so appropriate for this for this study. Exactly. All right. So, yeah, he gives homage. He declares that Daniel's God it says, Your God is a God of gods, Lord of kings, revealer of mysteries, because you were able to reveal this mystery. That's how he knew, because he, he already knew he had his, the best, the wisest men, the best astrologers. They, they already told him, you know, King, it's not possible for any man to reveal this. So, his own wisest men told the king that. No human being can do this. So when Daniel was able to do it, he had no, well, I don't, I was going to say he didn't have no, had no choice, but he came to the conclusion that your God revealed this to you. He is the, the true God. So how did he respond then to Daniel? What was the result in verse 48? He got a promotion. A promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Telling off the boss and he got a promotion. <laughs> he got a promotion. He had many great gifts. He made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. And and to your point earlier, Mark, sounds a lot like Joseph, doesn't it? Made made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. Ch chief, chief prefect. I'm not sure what a prefect is. Some kind of authority, ruler, chief governor, I guess like a chief governor over the, all the wise men of Babylon. So he put him over all the wise men. And here Daniel's still a kid because this is only a couple years in. He probably hasn't even hit 20 yet. And he's made ruler over all of these things. Go ahead, Donette. I, I was just kind of looking ahead and it's, you know, he he's very loyal to Shadrach, Meshach, and mm. Abednego too. He's always seems like yeah. he's looking out for them and yeah. making them part of whatever he's doing hmm. sorry mm -hmm. just looking to the next verse already <laughs> no no don't apologize that, that's that's that a good cool. because yeah here he here he just got look at that promotion that's a great point done that here i mean it, the temptation humanly speaking would for, be for daniel to you know get all puffed up wouldn't it and forget you know oh heck, forget about his friends <laughs> yeah what what's that about his friends forget about them yeah, like you, you could do that, you know, yeah. but he, he never does that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point. It would be so tempting. That would be so like our flesh, wouldn't it? Uh, hey, I'm yeah. alive now. I don't, you know, I don't want to be associated with these, I mean, these teenagers that are still, I'm. they're probably still in a somewhat lowly position, I mean, compared to him. So, yeah, it would be easy to forget about your friends. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Donette. That I mean, that's quite a promotion. He's ruler over the whole province of Babylon. The chief prefect, not just a prefect, but he's the chief prefect or chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. He's like the top dog, right under Nebuchadnezzar, kind of just like Joseph, as as Mark pointed out. And then, yeah, verse forty nine is as Donette pointed out. So he made a request to the king. Appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the administration of the province of Babylon while Daniel was at the king's court. So, yeah, he didn't forget about his friends. He wanted to make sure Nebuchadnezzar uh, recognized them and appointed them into responsible 
positions of responsibility. How does that finish up the chapter? I guess it did. The thing I like is he's he's never pursuing like to get at this level either. He's just pursuing mm -hmm. to be obedient to God, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's his whole that's his whole goal in his existence is to do that. And and if that's the byproduct of my obedience, and that's good, you know. Amen. Then Stephen's obedience was he got stoned, but he you knows yeah. still it, our our main ambition has to be yeah. to uh just be obedient. Yeah. So hard, man. I'm so bad with that. Stephen got an even better promotion. Yeah. He got promoted yeah. to the to be with and much quicker. Much quicker, yeah. So yeah. that that's a great point, Tom. Yeah, we I mean he, he got promoted. He, that that wasn't what he's looking for. I mean that that should be our our goal as well, right? I mean, maybe maybe your aspirations is to be a manager, director, president, whatever. I don't know. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but but don't make that your focus. Make your focus, you know, trust and obedience to to the Lord. And if if He wants right. you in that position, He's going to. And then don't use it for personal gain. You know, use it. You know, if, if you're president of a company, CEO. You know, great. Use it for God's glory. You're you're going to be able to impact people that that no one else can impact. You know, so yeah, great, great point, Tom. Use it all for God's glory. If He wants you to be rich, great. Use it for His glory, but don't make that your goal to to be rich. Right. Yeah. So, what else can we learn from this? I mean, that's a, I, I think that's a great point to take away from this chapter what else did we learn from this chapter this one went by fast it was what three months to get through chapter one and two weeks <laughs> or two <laughs> let's see um well wisdom and knowledge that only comes from god that's something we can take away whether it's wisdom to do our job or wisdom to understand God's word, that's only going to be revealed by God. What else? But the hardest of hearts can be mm. converted, I guess, or changed. Yeah, that's, that's a good takeaway. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Donette. I was just agreeing with Mark. Yeah, that's a definitely a good takeaway. Yeah, yeah. I need to keep that in mind whenever I think it's time to write somebody off. I'm thankful. But the story isn't over. Right. I'm I'm thankful God didn't write me off. I I'm, I wonder how many people thought that, you know, of me. You know, all that's that bonehead Jim. Is he ever gonna come around? So yeah. But even 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 then, like if we look ahead. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar kind of goes south on what what just happened. You know, it's mm -hmm. very exciting that that he had this moment, but in his with his worship and how he viewed his God, you know, he he worships in a different way, and and he mm -hmm. he he kind of keeps going with that here. Yeah, uh, that's another good point. Yeah, we'll get that for more whenever we get builds an image builds his own yeah. kind of golden calf you know that right. whole thing and i guess the takeaway for me on that is we need to follow up with someone when you know when we you know, if we see someone come to the lord don't just think okay they're converted let them on their own now we need to follow up with them and disciple them so that's a good point too tom yeah keith green used to always call those spiritual abortions where we put mm -hmm. somebody to the lord but then we don't feed them we don't do anything they just mm -hmm. you know they just sit out there and die because they didn't mm -hmm. because we don't come alongside we don't disciple yeah mentor whatever that's so critical yeah thank you tom something else yeah uh, it comes to mind is celebrities too the celebrities that mm -hmm. are in the public and they um, you know, have a conversion or, you know, uh, born again um, yeah. type um, uh, testimony, but then you'll see them, you know, slipping back into the, you know, the same uh, garbage, I guess, that they, you know, produced or, you know, what they were famous for before. Yeah. And everybody, 
you know, it's just like another black eye to the to Christianity and right. But it's not, it's not to blame. You know that they're not to blame. They yeah, they, they haven't matured. And right. Therefore, yeah. can't be as a mouthpiece for right. Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a temptation, you know, if, you know, if you or I led somebody famous to the Lord, the temptation is to go out and pray them before the public say, oh, right. this person is now a spokesman for Christ. Well, they're not quite ready yet. They need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make them carry them. that bag around yet. Yeah. It's a lot of burden to put on them. So, yeah. Good point, Mark. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Donette, did you have something additional? I was just going to say, like, just make sure you, you know, give the honor and glory to God. Um, sometimes that's hard to do. Some people don't mm. really are receptive to that. I need to do that more. But then sometimes when I do that, you just get silence or odd looks and mm -hmm. awkwardness. And <laughs> I need a better balance with that, I guess. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Does anybody have any yeah, <laughs> I, feedback to help it, help me with that? I guess I I don't them. I need to try better. I guess I I do the same thing, and sometimes I you know I, I'm in my mind I'm giving God glory, and I don't say anything because I yes yeah, think the same thing that you like oh I don't want to you know look like this uh, you know sanctimonious I don't you know it's holier than now oh you know yeah praise God yeah exactly I, I and it and and it's it's. I mean, Pride, it's sin, it's fear of man. I, I, there's no excuse for me doing it, but yeah, I, I can relate. So he's done it. I, I don't know. A lot of times I don't bother saying anything because I'm thinking, oh, you know, what are they going to think of me? Well, you know, who cares what they think about me? You know, I want to give glory to my God. So yeah, I, I struggle with that too, Donette. So pray for me, please. Oh. You know what? I, I hate that I do it, but I, I love that I see it in me so that i don't give up on other people mm. you know because i know i'm still i'm still taking those foot faults and things and i'm hitting them and mm. uh, that kind of thing but yeah keeps you humble it, it does it does as long as, as long as you don't go as long as you don't get too far from mm, it no. yep i i stumble enough to, to stay humble most of the time <laughs> <laughs> and you know daniel's response was okay. was to pray like they had that little magnificat when something mm -hmm. happened that it was just it was realizing i need to thank god for this even if it's just for your own personal time and maybe not in front of everybody else or you know if you're inclined to do that you should but i mean we should just always take time and thank god for what he's done every day mm -hmm. It's hard because you want to bring people to the Lord. You don't want to push them away. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. It's like trying to find that balance. Yeah. Um, I struggle with that. Yeah. Yeah. I do well, welcome to humanity. <laughs> yeah, because you yeah, you want to give glory to God and you want to tell people, okay, this is because of God. That's the only reason this happened. But yeah, and then you then you think, oh, am I gonna push them away? Am I you know, oh, there's Jim the Bible thumper again. So yeah, I I struggle with that, and and obviously I'm not the only one. So thank you for sharing that, Donette. All right, somebody like yeah. closing prayer. I will. Yeah. Lord Jesus, Father, this is this has been a difficult lesson for me to hear because uh because of my problems with with um just always wanting you to be the lord of my life for you to get the glory for anything in, in our lives and i uh, just pray that you give us the heart of daniel that 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 was the only thing that he really wanted to do in his life was to honor you and glorify you and um and you provided every need that he had and um and you drew him you drew him close to you and he was content in that and i pray that we would have that same kind of heart um i just love these discussions lord when you enter into them and and make us um 
make us consider who we are and where we need to be. And I uh, appreciate it so much. So please use your Holy Spirit and let us allow you to use your Holy Spirit in our lives and uh, put us put us on the ancient paths that Jeremiah talks about. Help us find our way. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everybody. This Thank you, Tom. This is really good. Good, stuff. good for me. I needed to hear this. Jeez. <laughs> necessary right. for me. <laughs> Not good right. for me, necessary. Good day. All right, everybody, have a blessed See you. Day. See you. Thank have, you. have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Have a great, have a great day. Bye.